Here we are, Cronenberg Morty. A reality where everyone in the world got genetically Cronenberged. We'll fit right in, Cronenberg Morty. It'll be like we never even left Cronenberg world. Don't you worry about that sort of thing, Cronenberg Morty. Let's go make ourselves at home, huh? Rick and Morty. It's a Toon Boom show, by the way. And it uses most of the tools at Harmony's disposal pretty dang well indeed. Knowing when to switch from tween-based puppets and full frame-by-frame frame and everywhere in between to keep the feel of the show seamless and nice. But when you slow it down, you can start to see the tricks and the techniques involved. One of the most fun areas is when everyone gets Cronenberged. Consider this first one. Crouches down, shirt rips off, and morphs into a thing. Different parts around the arms, the torso, and especially the head are simply sliding positions. At this point, the torso is drawn frame by frame. Tween, however, remains in place. Every frame, the body moves. But every second frame, the body is redrawn. The head, however, tweened up until this point, and then it becomes frame by frame itself. Morphing into the new face shape, but at what point does the new face become rigged? As at the end of the movement, when the mouth and the pieces are moving up and down, each one of them has a slightly different transformation to it. It's not all a singular unit. Look at the teeth. More and less of the teeth is being revealed at the different states. See that bottom row? The teeth itself is being squashed and stretched, although it didn't need to be. Would it have gotten away with just being slid? The most notable region, of course. The slime at the bottom of his lip. See it overlapping and disappearing from the chin flaps. The legs tear and morph into alternate arms. At this point here, about six states before the movement is complete, these arms are indeed complete. They simply slide across the body into their natural point. A curve deformer within allows them to bend. Meanwhile, the original arms, they morph into snakes and slither away. I never noticed this when watching the shot normally. There's a singular transformation frame using a linear gradient. Hmm. Every morph has something interesting going on. Look at this guy on the right as he... <laughs> this hand, it presses up against his face, morphs into the head, and that entire unit becomes a nose thing. From this frame here, itself becomes rigged. A curved deformer inside has it flop back and forth. Do you see the eye layers on the very top? They're sliding up and down too. Meanwhile, notice to match the other arm, a new one has grown out of the left-hand side. An extra hand sprouting from his lower side. The one on the left is great because it's palette morphs. Shapes being redrawn frame by frame to change its color. These ones have some interesting tricks. The one on the bike masks a lot of the unnecessary work. Look at, look at the praying mantis on the left. Yeah, you thought you could get away with it, did you? This one frame, look at all the stuff that just spontaneously appears. Mm. It crouches down and as the bike passes over, right there. Underneath the abdomen of the mantis on the bike, the transition from mantis to Cronenberg can be seen. The one on the bike, at this state here, all of the spikes become rigged, having their own individual pivot points as they wiggle about. I'm still quite puzzled if these were even designed beforehand or just completely made up straight ahead. I mean, where does that boot come from? It just erupts from the middle of his, <laughs> the middle of his head. All storm, Mr. Slitherbike, you can see the separation of some of the layers. Look underneath, look at the archway of his back. Do you see where the outline stops, has a gap and starts again? That's the edge of a layer. Look at the frames either side, you can see how it stretches and then, ah, it gets patched up again. Gets disconnected and repatched fairly regularly. This is about a four frame loop made of parented layers and curve deformers. But what am I talking about? What are these curve deformers and things? Allow me to demonstrate with Cronenberg Rick. 
First look across these two frames. The same layer splitting is happening here on the left knee bit. Do you see the gap that appears? Another one is happening on the angle just above the left toe. Over a couple of frames, it reasserts itself. The right knee can be seen completely rotating. Do you see the knee with the eyeball on it? It's not squash or stretching, it simply rotates and shifts a bit, moving underneath that secondary chin for the lower mouth. The most extreme candidate here, however, is the right arm. Well, his only arm in this case. It also just pivots, rotates, slides across his body. Very, very simple animation, but they get away with it somehow. On the back of that arm, a tentacle is parented to it and slides around with its every move, but with its own independent animation on top, a curve deformer going through each of the tentacles. Most interestingly, I think, is the alternate shot. We see the character from one more angle, only a couple of moments later. It's very interesting to see that half of it is completely identical. Completely identical. Like, not a retrace, it is literally the same asset. But other parts of it are completely different for seemingly no reason. Look under his main chin. More bits are there. His right arm, now sticking up in the air, has quite a different shape and extra parts to it. Other details, identical. The biggest difference, though, is a whole new tentacle has been added coming out of the top of his forehead. But why stop there? Let's take things even further. So I got a bit obsessed and made a complete reconstruction of the first Cronenberg Rick build. And we'll see exactly how the layers are set up, how the curved deformers work, how all of everything is structured together to make it move the way that it does. The layers making up this character, the left foot, left leg, this tentacle, this other tentacle, the backpack thing, a secondary body in the background to mask out things like the, this knee, as well as the foot underneath it, the eye in the knee, the main body at the front is all of this. All the eyes are kept separate. And the brow. The backpack strap goes in front of the body but behind the arm. These, these bits can tend to wobble. The tentacle which is attached to the right arm. And finally the mouth which is actually the same layer existing in four different places at the same time. In my hypothetical reconstruction of the character, this is what the network looks like. All of the layers and how they're strung together to make this thing tick. Its bone structure looks like this, most of which are contained inside tentacles, but inside, down the main body, there is one big bone which twists like this. It contorts and stretches the flesh of the body and carries other elements along with it. The tentacles and the arm, see the fourth mouth will always show the arm on the right can rotate and takes the tentacle on top with it as it slides around. But in turn, the tentacle can be picked up and rotated and shaped into its own form. The tentacles to the right, they behave the same way. Blah, 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 blah. These three here, this is the structure for the right leg. Pulling on the top leg itself will move both the eyeball and the foot. But the foot can be picked up and rotated independently and the eye kept separate as it has its own blink animation. Yay. In the timeline, each of the eyes can blink. These represent the blinking frames, but they can be pushed along down the timeline, which creates a more amusing... <laughs> Finally, the mouths. It is the exact same mouths represented four times. The way Toon Boom pulls this off, rather than anything being copied and pasted, it is literally the same layer, which is represented by three other pegs, placing them in each of their respective locations. So therefore, when one animates, the others will shift to the other state perfectly in time, every time. And looking back at the original, you can see this is proven as the subtleties of each mouth shape is exactly the same. The only difference is this one here, which has been flipped. Yeah, Cronenberg Rick, but you know, I'm gonna miss Cronenberg World because everyone was Cronenberg all along like us from the beginning, you know? Thank you for watching Read Between the Frames. If you'd like to be a real sweetie, consider checking out some other episodes from this series. Look, there they are. If you want to know more about animation or the program Toon Boom, which is used to make Rick and Morty, I do tutorials in that for... So maybe you should, like, subscribe or something. I don't know. Whatever. I, I think it'd be kind of cool.